Brilliant, brilliant player. Obviously, again, a good age, 22. He hasn't peaked yet. He's working with a brilliant team now, brilliant manager. He's got all the attributes. You can't imagine him not scoring 20-odd goals. You just can't imagine it. If he stays fit, he's obviously got the right attitude. What a signing. Mark, mm. you used the word there, exciting. Mm. That's exactly what this young kid is. Fantastic prospect. Looking forward to watching him over the next few months. It's interesting what uh, Gundawan says, Roy, that we didn't lose those Champions League games because we didn't have a physical number nine. But I think you could argue the first 25 minutes against Real Madrid, had they had somebody like Haaland, the game would have been out of sight, yeah, potentially. Poss possibly so. City were outstanding in both legs, and obviously they lost it in the second leg over the last what, mad five or ten yeah. minutes. And with a player like that in your squad, obviously it gives you a better yeah. chance. But he'll have to adapt his game. But what's helped is that they've done, they've done the deal early. He speaks English. His on-the-field stuff is fantastic, but he's still learning. And there's great potential. <laughs> but he's a natural goal scorer. Mm. You just can't see him. You just can't imagine him not scoring 20-odd goals for Man City. You just, you just can't imagine it, unless obviously he got an injury. But if he's playing regularly, and City are playing their normal way, he was... Look at him, he looks goals. like a Norse marauder, doesn't yeah. he? But, yeah, yeah, he does. <laughs> but the, th the thing is, you say about like those games, and the re remember, they were linked with Ronaldo and Harry Kane. Harry Kane was close. It might they needed that player for, for those reasons, for those reasons you said about those games, because they were magnificent in those games against Real Madrid. And the only thing they didn't do was, was, was score and finish it off with that, play, with that player that takes that half chance, Pook. So that's why he's there now. And you're looking at it now, and if it goes to plan with City and what they're doing, the way they've played up to this point and how dominating they've been and how brilliant they've been, then it should be, it's, it's going to be very exciting for City fans. What do you make of the fact that Pep Guardiola has allowed Jesus and Sterling to leave? Sterling to a direct Champions League competitor and Jesus to a team who wants to be a Champions League competitor? I, 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 I wouldn't doubt Pep's opinion on players. He works on them closely. You've got to keep moving on. You've got to freshen things up. They've got good money for these players who were brilliant players for Man City. Jesus really done well the last few months and Sterling's stats are fantastic. But with Haaland coming in, Pep's probably thinking, I want to keep it a hungry squad. And that's the name of the game. But you it's one thing to refresh, but to sell them to those two teams, particularly Chelsea, who are in the well, top Well, he probably four. doesn't see, at this moment in time, with the money that came in for these players, they probably don't see these clubs, certainly Arsenal, as a threat. Their big worry at the moment is trying to keep ahead of Liverpool, because Liverpool and Man City, I think, are so far ahead of the other teams, he thought it's worth a gamble. Mm. I think that you, you, you say um, about the players that's left, those players, for me, Gabriel Jesus, I think he's ready to go now, and be a main player somewhere. He's been a bit part player for City for many, many years in the time he's been there, I think five years. And, you know, we've seen something of him, what he's capable of doing. We've seen him come on and do it. Same with Sterling, the goals, the goals that Sterling's given him. But talking about Man City, Man City are able to, to, to pass those players on, whether it's to Chelsea, a direct competitor, or Arsenal are trying to be a direct competitor because they're not worried about people. They're not worried about what they can do and they're not worried about the fact that Jesus or Raheem Sterling's gone to Chelsea to do what they're doing. Good luck to them. They're looking at what they're doing and what they've done. Let's face it. I've in respect of a striker, they, they upgraded massively. Uh, hugely so. I've under underlined here the name Jack Grealish, particularly because Jesus and Sterling have played in his positions. It's a big season for him, isn't it? Because last season, I think we would say, was OK, wasn't it? It was all right. Yeah, nothing give, more than yeah, that. Yeah, we give Jack the benefit of the doubt that it was his first season, at, obviously, at Man City. He, again, he had to adapt. OK, he's used to the Premiership, but the demands at Man City and mm. working with Pep, I think Jack would probably be slightly disappointed the way this season went from, from a selfish point of view. So we'd be expecting a lot more from Jack this season. He's a bit older, a bit wiser. I think that it's so close, though, Roy, because the two chances course, what he had in that game, was it wasn't like misses. It was two... Oh, against Real Madrid. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. It was two unbelievable bits of defensive work from a team that knows what it takes to win that competition. So if he scores those goals, everybody's thinking differently about Jack Grealish. I think that hope for, him, for Jack's sake... But, yeah, he but he didn't, didn't but I'm just saying, it was, so it was so close, it was so close. Sport is a succession of sliding doors moments. Thank you very it? much, Pooch. <laughs> He's going to have it this season, hopefully. <laughs>